Got squash bugs? Let's squash them. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So to understand how to manage squash bugs, we need to talk about their life cycle. Fortunately, there's only one generation per year. Adult squash bugs overwinter in garden debris. And in the spring, they emerge, lay their eggs on the bottom of leaves, and then those hatch out into little nymphs, which are really fast. They're kind of black and gray, and they'll grow into adulthood by late summer. Squash bug damage looks, it starts out looking like little specks uh, on the leaves that turn yellow and then die. And eventually they can turn the entire piece of the vine into a crispy black or brown mess. The best case scenario is that it will slow production. The worst case scenario, especially on smaller plants, is it will kill the entire plant. Now you can find squash bugs on other plants besides just squash. They are gonna be on cucumbers, melons, and zucchini. As always, I'm gonna start with prevention because really with squash bugs, prevention is key. Once they become adults, for sure, it's much harder to deal with them. However, stick around because after prevention, I'm gonna give you video proof of a solution that will kill squash bugs in less than five minutes. So the first thing we can do is knowing that they overwinter in garden debris, let's just leave them less debris. Less debris is less shelter. So clean up the garden in fall, remove all plant pieces, all leaves, anything dead and laying around, get them into the compost bin. Now you wanna mulch your beds in the fall, but you don't wanna use debris type of mulches like straw or newspaper or wood shavings, things that the squash bugs are gonna just bury right into. Instead, mulch with compost. Another thing you can do is grow your squash vertically like I do. If you get the plants off of the ground where the squash bugs like to hang out, it's gonna hold them off a little. Not a lot, but it is something. And there's a lot of other way, other reasons that growing squash vertically works. And I've done a couple of videos on that. I'll link them down below. Crop rotation definitely helps because of the overwintering. When adults emerge from the debris in spring, they're expecting brand new baby squash seedlings there to start eating. Don't give them that satisfaction. You're smarter than them. Grow your squash in a different area. And better yet, cover them with a floating row cover from the very beginning. That way, when the squash bugs wake up in the other bed and try to find them, there's no way to get to them. Keep them covered throughout the growing season. There's a couple of great companion planting strategies when it comes to squash bug control. The first bug that you want to attract to your garden because, let's face it, they love squash bugs as a crispy snack are praying mantises. Now you can attract praying mantises to your garden by growing lots of shrubs, plenty of cane type plants like berries and roses. They're looking for those types of plants to build their egg cases in. Now I will warn you not to necessarily buy praying mantis egg cases at the garden center. Um, and if you do, make sure you only get one because when you introduce thousands of praying mantises to your garden, they don't pick and choose on which bugs they eat. They eat good bugs and bad bugs alike. So you don't wanna tip the balance of your ecosystem in your garden too much by introducing a whole bunch of praying mantises. Tachnid flies are one of those bugs that lay their eggs inside of their prey and then the babies eat the prey from the inside out. So tachnid flies are definitely a great predator to have around if you've got a squash bug problem. So some great plants to bring into your garden to help attract the tachnid fly would be cilantro, dill, daisies, and chamomile. Because let's face it, after a bunch of bug gut eating, you wanna just relax with a nice cup of hot tea. All right, so what if you already have them and prevention is no longer what you're looking for? First of all, you can hand pick the bugs and nymphs off of the plant. They're pretty easy to see. 
If that grosses you out, or there's just too many to, to do that with, I did come across a YouTube video from 2011 from Your Victory Garden, I believe was the, the channel name. I'll put a link below. He gave three different solutions. Two I've tried in the past on other bugs and it worked very well. The third one I'm including because he gave a visual demonstration that you gotta see. So the first two, if you watched my earwig video, um, I talked about putting a piece of wood or cardboard on the ground. During the night, the earwigs would get underneath of it to shelter, and in the morning, you could pick it up and get rid of them. Squash bugs work the same way. The second thing you can do is take a vacuum and just vacuum the bugs right off your plants. Now this next method was new to me. Uh, well, I've used it on other bugs, so it wasn't totally new to me, but the proof that he gave was absolutely new to me and something you should see if you have a squash bug issue. He took one tablespoon of Dr. Bronner's Castile soap and added that to a 32 ounce spray bottle full of water. Now I'll link that soap down below. He shook it up and he had a bucket or a little container with a bunch of squash bugs in it, adults and nymphs or almost adults. And he sprayed them with this solution and in less than four minutes, they were all dead. I'm talking like on their back, tongues out, they were dead. And that's pretty powerful stuff. I'm not showing the video here because number one, I don't have his permission. And number two, he did the video. He deserves the views. So I will again, put a link to that video down in the video description. Take a look. So I hope this helps. If you learned anything, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps push this video out to a wider audience. If you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing. And I will see you tomorrow when we will be talking about another demon of the squash world, and that is the squash vine borer. See you then.